we're going to start off from where we left last left off uh, by implementing a simple AI player for our game. Now, last time, uh, in one of the previous times, we checked for valid moves in a special way. So, um, right here we have various checks uh, for whether the move is valid. There's an, actually another way to check if uh, you entered a valid move. Um, and that is by uh, enumerating all of the moves, the valid moves, and then checking to see if the move that was provided is in that range, or is in, is one of the valid moves. Um, this is usually less performant, but it has the added benefit that it makes it very easy to implement a very simple um, kind of toy AI that just randomly picks moves. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a function get valid moves and it's going to take a board and return the valid moves. So um, there's two decisions to make. Um, you can either um, return the valid moves with respect to the player's point of view or you know how the moves are actually represented we're gonna choose to return them with respect to the player's point of view and that means that they will have um, they will be indexed by one so just to refresh your memory the the moves are board positions and so the first board position is has the index one, and uh, so we'll start with one instead of zero. So we just create a empty array, and then we're going to iterate through the board positions and if the board position, and remember um, so here we're iterating over the board positions. We will have to modify this later. Um, so if it's available, and we used underscore to mean that it was available, then we will add the index to the moves array. But uh, keep in mind there should be one index, so we, we add a one to it. And we return the moves. Okay, and now um, we can remove some of these checks, and it's a little, uh, they won't be as expressive for the user, but, um, you know, we'll have to deal with that. Uh, so, um, first, we want to check. Um, well, actually, that's probably not needed. Um, so first, let's get the valid moves. And this returns an array like this. Okay. So all we have to do is check whether. Um, uh, our index equals news that index of the answer. So we want to check if num answer, uh, or we want to get the index of num answer in valid moves. And I believe if num answer, which is the move that the player provided, is not in valid moves then the index will be negative one. So we can remove a bunch of these checks. If index equals negative one. <clears throat> uh, 
that is a good value. So we have less fidelity on the problem with the move, but uh, it's simpler logic. And there are actually are ways to you know, improve the, the fidelity of the message if we really want that. And that should work. So let's let's just try that. And so I've loaded the app here. Let's just try it. Okay, so it looks like it's working. And we're getting this this as an invalid move message. And that was it. Uh, something that will help the user is if we list the valid moves. These are the valid moves. So that's one benefit of doing this. There are also some implementations that like to highlight valid moves, and that's another use case. So there you go. And now we can implement a simple AI file. So we'll create a function, AI player, random AI player, and we'll give it a board, and it will return a random move. So first it needs to know what moves are valid, gets the valid moves, and then it picks one at random. So um, if there are no moves. I mean, it's possible, but um, so let's handle that. Zero, turn negative one. We don't want to do anything. And actually, let's just message as well. Message that no moves available. Otherwise, we just want to pick a random move. Um, that's that random returns the value between uh, 0 and 1 inclusive of the 0. And we can multiply that by the size of the array to get a good index. And we just need to call the floor to cast it to. Uh, uh, around it to an integer. <clears throat> so, um, let's let's do this. Um, just to keep it simple, uh, if the current player is O, why don't we um, why don't we have the AI player make a move? So um, you know someone all this will happen and then let the AI player move if it's <coughs> his move. So if current player is O or not of, let's return, so don't do anything. But if the current player is O, let's, uh, let's set the board position uh, to the player's move, so that should be, um, oh, actually, let's get the move, var, uh, var AI move equals <coughs> random Board. And a move is one equals turn player. Okay. And turn player equals x. We want to re render. And we also want to uh, check again. 
whether some would uh, one. Actually, we can copy a bunch of this stuff. And we should probably also increment the counter, like we do at the end of this area here. And let's also add a check. Remember we return negative 1, but there's no move. So if the move is negative 1, we'll just return. And we actually want to uh, return in both of these cases as well. So that we don't even get to the later steps. So notice that every time I move, the uh, AI is doing something. One, two, uh, five. There we go. And that is pretty much it for this uh, session. In the next session, I will go over testing. Note that our code has become somewhat unwieldy. Um, there's lots of repeated code, especially the code that I just created. So, uh, it definitely needs to be, um, cleaned up to, um, to continue to have it be maintainable.